Hi students, once again I am in front of you through this video mode, mode teaching. If you remember in my first, first lesson, Romeo and Juliet, we came across a phrase, the beauty of Juliet was too dear for this earth. And there I had mentioned, we would be referring to this phrase too dear in the next lesson. So, here am I today with the second lesson that is in our syllabus and that is Too Dear, written by Count Leo Tolstoy. Fine, it's important to know the meaning of the word dear. Now, too is a conjunction, but too, T-O-O, -O, means also added to that. So we have got dear and too dear means twice dear. Now this word dear, we need to get the meaning of this term dear properly. See here, the meaning of the term dear, as all of us know dear, usually we address a person, my dear, teacher, my dear friend, so dear, it can be dear, dearest person, means the meaning is loving or the one who is very close to us, very close to me, we say uh, he is very dear to me, she is very dear to me, my mother is very, very dear to me, my sister is dear to me, so, so that is the first meaning or one layer of meaning. Now, this is not the meaning that we will be studying in this lesson. The second meaning is, you find here, dear means expensive, means costly. Where we pay money, for example, these days, vegetables are very dear. Fish is very dear because things have become costly. Gold has become very, very dear, very costly. So, dear also means expensive or costly or else you must have come across a term especially those who are salaried people they have got something called DA or dearness allowance that is the allowance the money the help that is given to him to bear the cost to bear the cost for example when we go for paper evaluation to a different uh, district to a different city we are given dearness allowance that is the cost live in the city it may not cover the hundred percent of the cost but it is a help dearness allowance means the cost is included in that so the second meaning of the term dear means that is costly or expense there is a third the spelling is different dear all of you know animal we will come across this particular animal in the lesson that is uh, uh, with regard to travelogue, travelogue, journey in Japan and uh, Brazil. There we will come across this word or this animal, this term. So we have got here a homonym, a homophone as well. Whatever it is, we will be studying it in the grammatical section, detail about this particular terminology. Today, let us concentrate on the meaning, the second layer that is dear means expensive or costly. Hence, the meaning of the title of the lesson too dear means too costly, too expensive. Now the question comes, what is so dear? What is so costly? That we will come to know at the end of this particular lesson. Right. Now, let us uh, know something about Leo Tolstoy as well. Uh, in our lesson there, at the end of the lesson, it is said, Leo Tolstoy is a Russian writer, Russian writer, primarily he is a novelist, but also wrote many uh, short stories. His well-known short stories are War and Peace, written in 1869 and Anna Karenina in 1877. He has written many short stories as well. We will not be studying them. But this particular short story, 
too dear we will be studying over here right now i hope you have your textbook uh, kept ready for the reference well near the borders of france and italy on the shore of the mediterranean sea lies a tiny little kingdom called monaco so we are studying here about a particular kingdom the name of the kingdom is monaco it is not a, a biscuit we used to eat when we were small well monaco is the name of a kingdom and where is this kingdom situated very clearly it is said on the borders of france on the borders of france and italy this particular kingdom monaco lies many a small country town can boast more inhabitants than this kingdom for there are only about 7000 of them all told and if all the land in the kingdom were divided there would be an acre for each inhabitant okay now see here this is a very small kingdom which lies in between france and italy on the bank on the shores of mediterranean sea it is a very tiny kingdom a small kingdom about just 7000 inhabitants if you think about it, india has got more than 130 thousands of people and imagine monaco just 7000 that's why it is as big as a small small city not even it cannot be called even a city but it is a kingdom it is a country by itself and if the land the total land is divided well each person would get an acre per person one acre each which means even the size of the uh, country could be extend it is just extended to 7 7000 acres well what is special about the people of this area it is said they are peace loving people they are peace loving people but in the uh, in that in the stoy kingdom there is a real kinglet and he has a palace and courtiers and ministers and a bishop and generals and an army now we must remember though it is a small kingdom it is not devoid of many things whatever a big kingdom can think of having this small kingdom has there is a palace courtiers that is people related to the king we can be we can call it as a cabinet ministers are there there is a bishop there is a general and an army an army all these things are found in this kingdom so monaco kingdom which is situated on the borders of france and italy and all these things are found there so they have their palace uh, then courtiers for you people who are very close a kind of cabinet then ministers they are required for the cabinet even ministers they are there there is a bishop now who is a bishop i am sure you are very familiar with this term bishop is head of cathedrals here and there we find many churches each church has a person in charge called parish priest many churches together in a particular uh, jurisdiction which is called as diocese has a head called bishop so bishop is a diocesan head for catholics okay so all the bishops maybe in a particular state the bishops come under somebody called the archbishop archbishop then it goes higher we have got uh, nuncio then we have got cardinals then we have got the supreme pontiff of roman catholic church that is pope who is presently pope francis for us what is important is just to know the term bishop uh, uh, an image is displayed over here so we know even bishop as well when the kingdom monaco kingdom also had an army general was there when there was an army now what was the size of this army see it is said there it is not a large army only 60 men in all but still it is an army when it is an army because there were only 60 men in that particular army and this the kingdom had an army there are also taxes in this kingdom as elsewhere well now if you see that we have got levies tax on us house tax property tax profession tax different types of taxes and what for 
to the income gained through these taxes, government undertakes undertakes all the public works for the good of the people. Government cannot do the work for nothing because cost is involved. To cover up the cost, the tax is levied on the people. We have got the famous terminology these days. It is called GST, Goods and Services Tax. So. All this tax is collected so that the government is able to run its economic activities. Similarly, in this kingdom, the Monaco kingdom, the tax was in prevalence. What kind of tax? Tax on tobacco and on wine and spirits and a poll tax. Well, the tax was levied on tobacco. Maybe people were consuming a lot of tobacco. So tax was levied on that. Then tax on wine and spirits. During this lockdown period, wine or any kind of alcohol was not allowed. And you must remember the Karnataka government and also some other governments elsewhere opened up all the alcohol shops and you could see how the people rushed to buy. And I have read in the newspapers that the income of the state, the economy was revived because people began to buy wine and spirits. And a poll tax as well, tax on people, a special kind of tax that was levied in Monaco. All these three, especially three kinds of tax were there, remember them. But though the people there drink and smoke as people do in other countries, there are so few of them that the prince would have been hard put in to feed his courtiers and officials and to keep himself if he had not found a new and special source of income, special source of revenue. Now we must remember that in this particular kingdom, though tax was levied, the tax collected from the people or the income generated by this tax was not enough, not enough to run the state. The king was finding it difficult to run the state's everyday business, day-to-day -day business, day-to-day -day affairs through the tax. Hence, the king had to think of a new or a special source of revenue. What was this special source of revenue? This special source of revenue comes from a gaming house where people play roulette. Roulette is a game. Okay, We can say a kind of uh, a game where people uh, invest money and they get back and they lose also and they lose also okay right if i show you this particular uh, slide you will understand the game of roulette okay it's very famous in our uh, areas maybe sometimes when there are country codes related to it you will find this kind of games where people invest and it's an instant income for them sometimes they invest and they get back again the money but again it's not at all good it's not at all good but this particular uh, game was very much prevalent in Monaco. In Monaco, we will come to know about it. The reason he pays so much is that it is the only such gambling establishment left in Europe. Some of the little German sovereigns used to keep gaming houses of the same kind, but some years ago they were forbidden to do so. The reason they were stopped was because these gaming houses did so much harm. A man would come and try his luck, then he would risk all he had and lose it, then he would even risk money that did not belong to him and lose that too, and then in despair he would drown or shoot himself. So the Germans forbade their rulers to make money in this way. But there was no one to stop the Prince of Monaco and he remained with the monopoly of business. Now you must remember this gaming house that is roulette was prevalent even in other countries. One reference is given, it was there in Germany as well. But Germans were very clever. They or the administration in Germany, the king in Germany, forbade the people from playing this particular game, the roulette. Why? The reason was men or women, especially the men, used to come and play this game. Now when you play the game, they would lose the money. When he would lose the money, he would be having that craving to earn what he has lost. So he wouldn't have money he has already lost, 
so he would go and fetch his property or the gold from the family from the house and bring the money and again invest and again he would lose now he has nothing to lose there because property he has sold gold he has sold and nothing is left for him to get the money through so what he does now he goes despair he goes into despair he loses everything he gets into depression then only one way left for him is to end his life to commit suicide hence many people were losing or committing suicide many families used to come on the road because of this hence the germany which always thinks about the good of the people which any administration should think forbade in their country to pay play the game of roulette it said nobody should play this particular game but not so was in monaco what was the reason so now everyone but there was no one to stop the prince of monaco and he remained in the monopoly of business so in monaco such thought was not there it was very important for the king to get some special revenue he would get it from the game of roulette and he said let it go on he never thought about the good of the people or the harm that it caused the people he only thought about the income that it brought him hence he said when well, this game is allowed in my kingdom and it is said that he had the monopoly of this business i'm sure the economic student would understand the concept of monopoly in any business if one person has it then it is a monopoly nobody else is involved similarly here also neither germany nor france nor italy they were involved anybody even from those countries if they wanted to play the game of roulette they would come to monaco so for the king it is income and she said this particular game is allowed in my country to give you an example for example in some of the states in india also well alcohol is not allowed it is not sold it is forbidden but in some states it is allowed because it is a special source of revenue so here it is a game of roulette let's go ahead so now everyone who wants to gamble goes to monaco roulette it is another name for gambling they go to monaco whether they win or lose the prince gains by it you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor as the proverb says see there is a nice proverb and what is the proverb you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor what is the meaning of this it has got a very deep meaning you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor imagine you are a public servant a government servant and you have a particular amount of salary that is given to you just imagine which is 15000 and at home you have the person whoever is a public servant has his wife and he has got two kids so imagine there are four people and with the 15000 salary that you get you can just manage to run your family in the present context difficult but you can manage you can manage now imagine a person who earns 15000 can he think of having a palatial house that to within one or two years of joining the service highly impossible because these days building cost is very very much it is very dear so nobody can think about it with 15000 salary if you are earning in lakhs you can think so if a man with 15000 salary within 2 years of joining the service builds a palatial house not even taking any loan from the bank then you can imagine this person has earned money through some wrong ways maybe he is involved in corruption that's what he said here you can't earn stone palaces by honest labor if you were very honest you wouldn't get involved in corruption you wouldn't earn more money you will not be able to build a stone palace a big palace you will live in a very small house according to the amount of salary that you get so here also for king it was not possible for him to have a kingly life with a source of income which which is to come from source of tobacco wine and spirits and poll tax so what he said he resorted to the game of roulette gambling to earn more money so that you can have a luxurious life what kind of life that we will come to know later and the king of monaco know knows it is a dirty business but what he, what is he to do he has to live and to 
draw a revenue from the from drink and from tobacco is also not a nice thing so he lives and reigns and rakes in the money and holds his court with all the ceremony of a real king well sometimes he justifies himself what he says when say i am drawing money or income through uh, tax on tobacco tax on wine and spirits again which is not good but if that is official if that is legal then what is wrong in uh, getting some income from the game of roulette he justifies himself as a result with the money that he gets he is able to run his palace and all the business of the palace like any other bigger kingdom uh, what was his style of living you see here when he has his coronation then his levies he rewards his sentences and pardons and he also has his reviews councils laws and courts of justice just like other kings only on on a smaller scale now must remember this king he has got coronation sentence coronation meaning anybody else king this is a crown on his head the ceremony of uh, uh, making him a king or any person so coronation ceremonies are there then he has rewards that is the official way of giving rewards then sentences when if somebody commits a crime he sentence which means there is a court of justice he pardons king has got all the rights to give pardons or not when reviews if there are any reviews any discussions they are held councils are held the ministers come together and they hold a meeting well there are laws there is court of justice there is all the thing going on in this particular monaco kingdom there is one word there he has his coronation his levies what is this levies levies means the official guests which come to the palace of the king since he is a king many official guests would come and they are to be looked after very well it can be an ambassador from the neighboring country from the neighboring king is it can be his representatives or some ministers visiting they are to be looked after well it involves lot of expenditure hence he has all these things and for which he has got this business of uh, uh, rule and game now now it happened a few years ago that a murder was committed in this toy princess domains now what happened something strange happened in this particular monaco kingdom for the first time in the history of the kingdom a murder a crime was committed the people of that kingdom are peaceable such a thing had not happened before so as i said first time in the history it happened otherwise the monarch the people of the kingdom of monaco were peace loving ones they were not involved in any of the uh, criminal activities here it happened the judges assembled with much ceremony and tried the case in the most judicial manner there were judges and prosecutors the jurymen and barristers they argued and judged and at last they condemned the criminal to have his head cut off as the law directs so far so good now what happened when the murder was committed when well, now there is a court of justice hence the judges were called the jurymen were called the prosecutors the barristers the lawyers all were called and they discussed everything they applied the rule of the country they applied everything and as per the law they came to a conclusion next they submitted the sentence to the prince remember here sentence has nothing to do with a group of meaningful words here sentence means the punishment so sentence can have two meanings as we have two meanings for the word dear d e a r so here also sentence sentence means punishment so they came to a conclusion and for the official approval of the king they said this is the punishment to be awarded to this particular criminal who has committed the murder the prince read the sentence and confirmed it the prince said i confirm it okay go ahead and uh, execute this punishment if the fellow must be executed execute him when well, if the culprit the one who has committed the murder must be executed execute him because 
that is according to the rule of the land when things were good the punishment came out now you need to execute the punishment you need to carry out the punishment in our places we have got uh, prisons where the culprit is kept and if he has to be hanged on a particular day he would be hanged for example the uh, delhi rape gang all the culprits the four of them were hanged in the month of uh, january or february and we remember that they were hanged the punishment given by the court was executed executed so now let's see what happens here what is the punishment given that he needs to be executed so whether it will be done or not let us see judges the jury men all have come together and they have come to a conclusion that the person must be executed his head must be cut off so what happens now there was only one hitch in the matter and that was that they had neither a guillotine for cutting the heads off nor an executioner now there was a problem as i said in the beginning as it is said in the beginning that this was for the first time that the crime was committed in monaco since it was for the first time they had never thought about a guillotine machine what is a guillotine machine a guillotine machine is used to cut off the head of a person it is a machine for example to give you an example we had never thought about corona so india did not have many ventilators to be used in case of corona these days i think uh, one of these days our last week america gave us a number of ventilators which have arrived we had but very few rim limited ones but now we wanted more because we never thought about corona yes. now there are many ventilators available which can be used if a person is found to be very serious suffering from breathing problem similarly monaco kingdom had never thought that there would be a crime and a person needs to be executed hence they did not have a guillotine machine nor an executioner a person who would operate this machine and cut the head uh, of that criminal well, they did not have it the ministers considered the matter and decided to address an inquiry to the french government asking whether the french could lend them a machine and an expert to cut off the criminals head now what is the other way left about when we don't have certain things we always borrow it from our neighbors now we know monaco is situated on the banks or in between france and italy so they thought why don't we ask the french uh, king king of france whether he could provide it what did they do they wrote a letter and if so would the french kindly inform them what would it cost the letter was sent a week later the reply came a machine and an expert could be supplied and the cost would be 16000 francs so the letter was addressed to the king of france who was very uh, within no time he replied and the reply said well a guillotine machine could be supplied along with that even an executioner could be provided but the cost involved would be 16000 francs franc remember is a currency that was in use in france today most of them use euros franc it is there but euro they have used they use it so that time it was francs so the total cost involved was 16000 francs this was laid before the king he thought it over 16000 francs the rich is not worth the money said he now though the council comes together and takes a decision the decision has to be approved by the king even in earlier case we saw that the ministers the judges the jurymen decided the case but the punishment had to be approved by the king now here as well the ministers came together they decided what to do they thought or decided to write a letter and the letter was written the reply came and now they came to the king asking him whether it could be and the king said well let us ask and when the reply came they came to know that the cost involved was 16000 now the king thought over it and he said the rich is not worth 16000 i'm sure last year last year while studying the lesson the first lesson that is uh, the gentleman of the jungle there we came across this particular phrase worth 
work. This is costly but is worth achieving. Now here worth means whether the man is worth spending 16,000 francs. The question was asked and the king says he is a wretch, he is a criminal. He does not, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not worth, it's not worth spending 16,000 francs. Why should we spend 16,000 francs on a criminal? What benefit are we going to get it? You see, your king thinks in those terms. So he says, well, no, this offer cannot be accepted. This was laid before the king. He thought over it and he said, the rich is not worth the money. Can it be done somehow cheaper? Why 16,000 francs is more than 2 francs a head on the whole population. The people won't stand it and it may cause a riot. What is the reason King decided that way? We know the population is just 7,000 in Monaco. Now imagine to collect 16,000, how much each person should be levied the tax. 7,000 into 2 francs means it will be only 14,000. Here it is 16,000, another 2,000 which means per head it will be little more than 2 francs. Again, people have to pay for it. King won't put it from his pocket. That would be very costly. There will be a revolt in the kingdom. People won't pay for it. Every time we see, even in our country, when the petrol prices go higher or cooking gas, LPG gas goes higher, there is a riot. There are strikes held telling that it is too costly. So here also, he fears that people may revolt. And he says, no, shall we do it in a cheaper way? Is there any other possibility? So council was called to consider what could be done and it was decided to send a similar inquiry to the king of Italy. Now they said, well, France, it is not possible. Let's go over to the other neighbor. What is that? Let's go over to Italy and find out whether they have a guillotine machine and whether they have an executioner. See, for every time the council comes together and decides. See how many times the council has to come together and the cost is involved. It requires a lot of money. Of course, they have their game of roulette, which supplies them the money required. And the king is not bothered. But remember, who is at the receiving end? Who is losing the money? People are losing. Who is dying? Families are dying. Why? Men are involved in this particular game of roulette. They lose money. Whether they lose it or gain, the king gets his commission. And this is what we need to think about that. Anyhow, they write a letter to Italy. What happens? The French government is republican and has no proper respect for king. But the king of Italy was a brother monarch and might be induced to do the thing cheaper. So the letter was written and a prompt reply was received. Now the council thinks, well, France has got a republic type of government. Hence, they have no respect for the king. Whereas Italy had a king. They had a monarchical type of government. King was ruling there. They said, well, he can Italy happens to be a brother monarch. So they may consider, they may give some concession. Hence they thought, write a letter. The Italian government wrote that they, the Italian government replied that they could have pleasure in supplying both a machine and an expert. And the whole cost would be 12,000 francs, including traveling expenses. Hence what happened? They said, we can provide you with a guillotine machine and an executioner. You will find here in the slide a guillotine machine. You see here, this is the blade. And the person is made to keep his head on this part. And this blade is pulled down and the head gets separated from the body. So this is a guillotine machine. And of course, there is an ex executioner, a person who does that. Okay. So uh, Italy wrote that. Well, it is quite easy. Uh, we will supply it. If France had quoted 16,000 francs, Italy says, well, we can supply you the same thing for 12,000 francs. 12, francs. Moreover, they say, well, it includes everything, even the traveling expenditure, the transport cost involved also could be given. This was cheaper, but still it seemed too much. The rascal was really not worth the money. You see, a king, the king thinks over it. If France had quoted 16,000, well, Italy cost, uh, cost, uh, quotes 12,000. But the thing is that even 12,000 is not less an amount. 
even it is too much almost again 2000 francs per person maybe a little less but again it is costly so the king says well the rascal is not really worth the money earlier case he said well that wretched fellow is not worth here he says calls him a rascal of course because he is a murderer he has committed a murder murder that too in a peaceful kingdom first time in the history of the kingdom he has committed a murder who knows this may lead to other people to commit the same crime so they have to be very careful so he says well we cannot spend 12000 francs on this rascal it would still mean nearly 2 francs more per head on the taxes hence what is the way out you know very well another council will be called they discussed and considered how it could be done with less expense could not one of the soldiers perhaps be got to do it in a rough and homely fashion look at the joke here so they think whether we can ask the soldiers to do this job because usually soldiers they go for wars they go for battles and in fact it looks like their job is to kill the enemy soldier of course in view of protecting their own country so he says if they are able to kill in a war why can't they do the same thing in this case this criminal they can cut off his head can they do it of course he calls it as a rough and homely fashion homely fashion the general was called and was asked can't you find us a soldier who would cut the man's head off so the army general army of 60 people we know 60 men he was called and he was asked whether a soldier could carry out this particular punishment in war they don't mind killing people in fact that is what they are trained for so the general talked it over with the soldiers to see whether one of them would not undertake the job but none of the soldiers would do it no they said we don't know how to do it it is not a thing we have been taught soldiers began to speak like students in the exam if a particular question is asked sometimes the students say this particular question is not taught to us but a similar one was taught in the call in the school but they say this particular one was not taught similar the same question then we are able to do that and the soldiers reply in a similar fashion they say we are trained to kill but that is in the war but in a situation where to cut off a head of a person we never did that we are not trained to do that you see how funny thinking of the people what was to be done should i ask you this question you know very well you yourself would say another council must have been called Yes. Again, the ministers considered and reconsidered. They assembled a commission and a committee and a subcommittee, and at last they decided the best thing would be to alter the death sentence to one of imprisonment for life. And now the ministers come together and they discuss. They hold a council. They hold a discussion, and they say, "Well, if guillotine machine cannot be brought." if soldiers cannot cut the head of the person what is the next best thing what is the next alternative they have got they say well let us change the death punishment into life imprisonment the person must remain in the prison till the end of his life until he dies he should be put behind the bars should be kept in the prison so they say well let us change the punishment and let us put him in the prison and they come to that conclusion and you know they can't carry out whatever they have decided it has to be sent to sent for the approval of the king now it was this would be enable this would enable the prince to show his mercy and it would become cheaper as well another thing they said was that well if the punishment is changed to that of life imprisonment people would think that the king is very kind person he has shown mercy to the person instead of death punishment now he can think of living living until he dies so people would think good of the king also they thought and the second one is that it would be cheaper you need not spend 16000 francs or 12000 francs so what did the king think about that the prince agreed to this very funny has the ministers so the king as the king so the ministers the prince agreed to this and so the matter was arranged the only hitch now you see earlier there was a hitch when the death punishment was given there was no guillotine machine and an executioner now imprisonment or life imprisonment punishment is given now the problem was even there is a hitch here 
and what is the hitch? There was no suitable prison for a man sentenced for life. We know the reason because a crime was committed for the first time. So they had never thought about a prison as well. So now see there is a problem and they are running to arrange a prison. Okay, when house is on fire, you can't go and dig a well to get the water and quench the fire. A similar one, we need to think ahead. Okay, we need to think and we need to be ready to face any situation. Even Corona has taught us how we should be ready to face the situation. We do not know what is going to happen tomorrow, but we need to think about it and get ready to face the situation. Okay, nowadays you can see the local administration gets ready to face the rainy season. Anything can happen. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. So here also they had no prison because they had not thought about it. So what to do now? They require a prison. There was a small lockup where people were sometimes kept temporarily. But there was no strong prison fit for the permanent use. They had a small prison, but it was for temporary purpose, maybe for a day or two. But here they need to keep this person for, for life. We don't know how many years he is going to live. Later we will come to know how old is he. But still, so they require a strong prison. But there was no strong prison fit for the permanent use. However, they managed to find a place that would do and they put the young fellow there and placed a guard over him. The guard had to watch the criminal and had also to fetch his food from the palace kitchen. So, not only a prison, a guard is required. Otherwise, the prisoner can run away, the criminal can run away as the guard was placed. Now, with the criminal, another guard, he requires food. Even criminal needs to be fed and where is the food from? was supplied from the king's kitchen, king's palace kitchen. So a royal treatment for the prisoner, for the culprit is provided here. Remember, the king had called him a wretched, king had called him a rascal. Now the same rascal is given the food from the palace kitchen. The prisoner remained there month after month till a year had passed. But when a year had passed, the king let Looking over the account of his income and expenditure one day, noticed a new item of expenditure. Now see, king was going through the yearly or annual expenditure. He was going through the accounts. It is called that the word kinglet. Earlier also we came across this word. Kinglet means a small king. For example, you must have heard duck, small ducks, ducklet. King, kinglet, remember this, everywhere we can't use this, uh, but in certain cases, yes. So the kinglet, while going through the account, noticed a special item of expenditure. Notice the new item of expenditure. This was for the keep of the criminal, nor was it a small item either. There was a special guard and there was also the man's food. It came to more than 600 francs a year. Now one year had passed since this criminal was put behind the bar, put in the prison, the guard was placed, the guard was bringing the food from the palace kitchen. As the king was going through the account, he found that a new item of expenditure, not the income, expenditure was noticed. And what was the item of this expenditure? It was the expenditure involved in supplying food for both the guard and the criminal. And what was the total cost involved? 600 francs a year, not a small amount. And the worst of it was that the fellow was still young and healthy and might live for 50 years. Can you imagine now? One year, 600 francs. The criminal was very healthy, was very young. He may live for another 50 years. That's only a speculation. Now, even if you think 50 years more, just imagine 50 into 600, how much it is. So much of money is required only to look after, look after a criminal. Now, common students can calculate how much money is required and the interest and the compound interest and extra things that come in the way of uh, other expenditure involved here. So I'm sure now they have to find a way out. What will be the way out? What is that they're going to do? You know very well the council would be called. 
When one came to reckon it up, the matter was serious. It would never do. So the prince summoned his ministers and said them. So the king wouldn't take any decision. He would refer the matter to his ministers. They would come together. They will have a discussion. There is a council and then they would decide. You must find some cheaper way of dealing with this rascal. The present plan is too expensive. The present plan is too dear. And the ministers met and considered and reconsidered, considered and reconsidered, considered and reconsidered till one of them said, Gentlemen, in my opinion, we must dismiss the guard. So he came up with a suggestion. What is the suggestion? Dismiss the guard, which means if it is 600 francs, it will come down to 300 francs because if two people are involved can be fed for 600 francs. If only one person is there, it would be 300 francs, 50% less cost. But then rejoined another minister. The fellow will run away. The guard is not there. The criminal would run away. The purpose is defeated. He would run without the punishment. Well, said the first speaker, let him run away and be hanged to him. See how clever they are. To reduce the expenditure, the criminal can run away from the prison. Which means, what is the meaning here? You can commit a murder. King will look after you. When it becomes costly, you can run away and there will be no punishment. What message are we giving to the society? Well, they said, let him run away and be hanged to him. Be hanged to him means, let whatever happen to him, we are not bothered. You do whatever you want. So, they reported the result of their deliberation, their discussion to the king led and he agreed with them. Now, the king is such, I already told you, as the ministers, so the king, he said, fine with it. The guard was dismissed and they waited to see what would happen. See, they thought that if the guard is not there, the criminal would run away. With that, the problem is solved. They can tell the people, well, he ran away from the prison. So, when he ran away, what happens? All that happened was that at dinner time, the criminal came out. The guard is not there. He must have waited for the food to come and the food did not arrive because guard is not there. So, the criminal comes out of the prison. He came out and not finding his guard, who is already not there, he went to the prince's kitchen to fetch his own dinner, to bring his own dinner. He took what was given to him, returned to the prison, shut the door on himself and stayed inside. A kind of very holy prisoner we have got here. He did not run away. He had an opportunity to run because there was no guard. There was nobody guarding over him. Even watching over him, he could have run away. But he would not do that. He would go to the palace kitchen, collect the tiffin, the food, come back, lock the door and remain inside. See what kind of prison we have got here. Next day the same thing occurred, which means the ministers were stealthily observing him. Same thing happened. Next day again the same thing would happen. He went for his food at the proper time. But as for running away, he did not show the least sign of it. He didn't even see whether somebody is observing him because he was not interested in running. You know why? It's very clear. Because his life had become very cozy inside the prison. Palace food was given to him. King's food was given to him. Why should you run away when you are looked after so well in the prison? After all, we always work for the sake of our stomach, for the food. Now it is taken care. We require a place to remain and there is prison. So why should you work and why should you run away? If you run outside, you may have to work and there is no guarantee you would get the work. Hence, it is better to be here. He did not show the least sign of it. What was to be done? You know, what was to be done? What would they do? The ministers, they would come together and they would consider and reconsider, consider and reconsider. Same thing they did. We shall have to tell him straight how straight out they said that we do not want to keep him. So the minister of justice had him brought before him. So the ministers came together in the discussion one thing came out. What is that? Let us tell the criminal, please run away from the prison. Straight out, tell him, don't beat around the bush. Tell him straight, it is too costly to look after you. So you please go away from the prison. And the task 
was given to the minister of justice so the minister of justice called this prisoner this criminal to him and what did he say why do you not run away asked the minister there is no guard to keep you you can go where you like and the prince will not mind he asked the prisoner why are you not running from the prison why don't you run away there is no guard there is no lock and you can do whatever you want why don't you run away see the indirect way of telling to run away what was the reply given to him i dare say the prince would not mind replied the man but i have no way to go what can i do you have ruined my character by your sentence and people will turn their backs on me see the way the criminal puts forward his argument for not running away first he says well i have no way to go see i don't have a place to go where can i go i don't have a family i used to live my life in this way and now where will i go second secondly you have ruined my character the whole kingdom monaco kingdom all the 7000 people they call me a criminal they call me a murderer you have assassinated my character it would have been better you had to cut off my head but now my character is ruined my name is spoiled and he says so the people will turn their backs on me if i go to the place now if i go to the village they will look at me and they would turn their backs they would reject they would not like to talk to me they would segregate me from the society they would separate me from the society and put that uh, label on me that i am a murderer besides not only i have got out of the way of working now see almost 2 years something i am inside the prison i have not been working now which means i have lost that interest in working something like students complaining these days is a long time we have not gone to the classroom we have not studied so we have lost that habit of studying that's why i am having this online classes where you remain in touch with your subject says i have got out of the way of working you have treated me badly see he accuses the criminal uh, the ministers he accuses the king that king has treated him very badly how is that it is not fair what are what, what are his arguments first in the first place when once you sentence me to death you ought to have executed me but you did not do it he says first time when i committed the murder I mean, in the beginning you said i am sentenced for life uh, i am sentenced for death punishment did you carry out the death punishment did you execute me did you cut off my head you did not that is something wrong you did then that is one thing i did not complain about that i did not complain to you i kept quiet then you sentenced me to imprisonment for life and put a guard to bring my own food but after a time you took him away again and i had to fetch my own food what a criminal is supposed to do he is not supposed to come out of the prison because he is always imprisoned he is put inside the bars behind the bars and you good you kept a guard he is to supply the food that was right thing but after a year you removed the guard and i myself had to go you see he says i myself had to go to the palace kitchen and fetch my own food which was not correct after some time you took him away again and i had to fetch my own food again i did not complain but now you actually want me to go away i can't agree to that you may do as you like but i won't go away see straight out he says do whatever you want as you have done earlier you change my death punishment into life imprisonment you kept a guard then took him away now you want me to go away hey no do whatever you want i am not going to run away from this place what was to be done what would the ministers do what could they do you know very well they will call for another council one more council was summoned what course could they adopt the man would not go they reflected and considered reconsidered considered the only way to get rid of him was to offer him a pension okay so so they said well what can we do now all the efforts that we did to have a prison to give him palace food everything did not work out so what shall we do now so they said well there is only one way left now they reflected and considered the only way to get rid of him was to offer him 
a pension to offer him a pension and so they reported to the prince there is nothing else for it said they we must get rid of him somehow get rid of him we must do away with him he should go from here otherwise it is going to be too expensive it is going to be too dear for us so what shall we do he is not ready to go shall we offer him the pension scheme the sum fixed was 600 francs and this was announced to the prisoner remember when the king went through the account the total cost per year in terms of food was 600 francs and now they asked him to go away run away just to reduce that cost just to reduce that cost and the guard was removed which means the cost would have been 300 if he was kept in the prison but now they decide to give 600 francs as pension which means every year and how long it would be paid as long as he is alive just compare if he was to be in the prison it would have been 300 francs a year now is they have asked him to go away it would be 600 francs the double amount can we ask the intelligence the wisdom of the ministers here when said he so he's offered the pension now scheme and will he accept it let's see i don't mind as long as you undertake to pay it regularly on that condition i'm willing to go we have this prisoner who is very clever very clever very wise he says fine are you going to give me the pension scheme i am ready to accept it but still i have a condition and what is the condition it must be paid to me regularly yeah it should be regular one year you pay next year it is discontinued that doesn't work i would come back and sit in the prison if you are ready to agree to my condition i am ready to go away from the prison yes it was agreed so the matter was settled he received one third of his annuity in advance and left the king's dominions well there was also one more condition what was that that one third of his annuity that is out of 600 one third that is 200 francs should be given in advance so he says give me 200 in advance the other 400 you give throughout the year or before the year ends i should get it on that condition he was ready to go and they agreed he was given one third of his annuity that is total pension in advance and he left it was only a quarter of an hour by train by train only quarter of an hour that is hardly 15 minutes for him and he went he emigrated he went out of the bounds the limits the borders of monaco and settled just across the frontier across the borders where he bought a bit of land he bought a bit of land across the frontier and what he did what he did there we'll come to know he bought a piece of land then started market gardening with the 600 francs that is 200 is given to him in advance what he started he started market gardening now he lives comfortably there he always goes at the proper time to draw his pension when it is time that is 200 in the beginning of the year then the rest that is 400 francs in between or throughout the year he would go and he would collect his pension from monaco king and he would come back and he would be busy with this garden garden marketing agricultural work he always goes at the proper time to draw his pension having received it he goes to the gaming tables stakes two or three francs sometimes wins and sometimes loses and then returns home he leaves peaceably and well look at him now he has enough money he need not work of course he has got garden marketing and more than that he also gambles he goes to play the game of roulette sometimes he wins and sometimes he loses he is not bothered because he has the other source of income that is pension from the king of monaco he lives peaceably and well the students it's a good thing that he did not commit his crime in a country where they do not grudge expense to cut a man's head off or to keep him in prison for life a very sarcastic comment by leo tolstoy at the end 
if the same uh, crime was committed elsewhere other than Monaco, you can imagine what would have happened. Okay, it is a thought for us to think over it and discuss that will help us to understand the story in a better manner. But more than that, I think we need to understand one more thing. We need to analyze this story and ask ourselves for what purpose this story is being told to us. See, we said here it is a humorous way. It's a humorous and satiric description of how the lack of political will of state commits a crime of letting a hardcore criminal go scot free just because they find the executioner charges too expensive, too dear. Now, when you go through the story, one thing we come to know why so many things happened here. Why he was allowed to go. Why that punishment was changed from death punishment to life imprisonment. From life imprisonment, the guard was removed. He was asked to go. Then he was given a pension. Why all these things happened? Only reason was that they considered the cost involved in looking after him or in making him to undergo the punishment. And it is said, we come across here, the follies of government, that is the uselessness of the government or the wisdom of the government. It's a poor planning. See, they had never planned properly. They did not have foresight. It was lack of foresight. It was a lack of confidence from their side. It was lack of wisdom from the side of the ministers and the king, of course, brought to a sad situation of this particular person. Should we not apply the same thing to our governments as well? Should we not ask a question whether similar things are happening? What about the different policies of our governments? How the policies are planned? How they are executed? What is the effect of it on the common people? Should we think about it? See, though the story was written by Count Leo Tolstoy very back, say way back in 18th or 19th century, today how relevant it is. How the representatives of people uh, think or plan the policies of the government. Sometimes it can be related to education, sometimes it can be related to economy, sometimes it can be related to our external affairs, how they lack the foresight. Hence, let us be very, very careful when we elect and select our representatives. We need to think many things. Those who are able to rule over us, those who are able to rule wisely, we need to select and elect such people. And this is the lesson Leo Tolstoy wants all of us to learn. Otherwise, it would be very costly for us as well. Okay, our own vote should not be too costly for us. We don't come to know when we do it, we'll come to know later. There is a similar lesson, the author, the later part of the syllabus, we will have a relationship to this particular lesson. And I hope this particular lesson has helped you to understand. Thank you very much. God bless you. Stay home and stay safe.